Hi, and welcome to Trading with TK, teaching you to turn ideas into money. We're at www.tradingwithtk.com. This is our weekend question and answer where I try to answer some questions uh, that have been sent in by some of my readers. And as uh, as always, I, got, I have a lot of questions, uh, all good. Uh, obviously, I can't answer all of them uh, in the video. Uh, YouTube limits me to 10 minutes on each one of these videos. Um, so I'm restricted as to how much I can actually put out. Um, but don't stop asking because if I don't highlight it in the video, I certainly will answer your question in, in an email. Uh, so that's how, that's how you learn by asking questions. So don't uh, don't be afraid to ask me some questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll basically tell you I don't know or I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so let's get started. First question comes in from Gary, and Gary writes, uh, "I'm curious about the market on the close orders uh, when you have such a huge volume of them. How is the price determined?" Is it the four o'clock price, or is the imbalance settled uh, and the market on the close filled? I ask this because last night the Dow dropped an additional 60 points uh, on the market on the close orders. Okay, so this is a good question. You know, uh, when I first started on the street uh, back in the uh, late 60s, they they always had market on the close orders, but they were small orders. They were like 500 shares or a thousand. You know, I mean, if you had three or four thousand to sell market on the close, this was a pretty big order back then. Uh, but you know, as the markets grew and more and more products were developed, uh, such as program trading and options, and um, and and the, just the volume grew and the number of mutual funds grew, uh, so did the market on the close orders start to grow. And uh, the, the the one big time that that comes to mind that uh, really where there was a big disparity between supply and demand right on the close was the very first triple witching uh, uh, ex uh, expiration date. And I'm not really sure why there was such a huge uh, disparity because I n never really saw it again after that. Maybe it was because they, the, the players weren't sophisticated enough to know that they could hedge themselves uh, out in the, in the prior months of the options or what the real reason was. But uh, th this this comes to mind when we had tons of stock for sale on the close, and uh, the orders were coming in like th still at 358. So we had really no idea what we were looking at, and some of these stocks closed down two and three dollars from the prior sale uh, at 359, and uh, you know that that sort of upset the marketplace and the exchange, uh, you know, started to take uh, some action after that, and they started to. Um, uh, create some some rules that would stabilize or keep the markets more orderly than that. And uh, like I said, it, it came as a surprise to everybody that day. No one, no one had expected it. But once it happened, they took steps to correct it. And the steps are now, which we live by, and the orders are getting bigger and bigger now. I mean, there's millions for sale on the close. But uh, the order has to be in at a certain time. I believe it's 3.20 or 3.30. If the order isn't in by then, you can't have a market on the close order. Um, I don't think it's a great way to execute an order because it's almost like sticking a stop order in. You know, get me out at any price. Basically, is what you're saying almost. Uh, but you know, these fund managers, it's not their money. <laughs> so, you know, if you know what I mean. Um, anyway, um, uh, so and then the specialist has to. Um, uh, indicate on the tape at a certain time, like maybe 3:30, how many shares uh, he has either to sell or to buy on on balance, market on the close, and that gives all the other market participants an opportunity to take advantage of the disparity, and they can put their bids in or their offers in, and uh, it certainly has done a great job in uh, in keeping these uh, market on the close orders uh, somewhat orderly. And you know, for the Dow only to drop down an extra 60 points uh, the other day uh, to fulfill all those uh, market on the close orders, I, I think it was remarkable under the conditions that uh, the market was in, you know, under at the time. So, um, so the system that the exchange has uh, seems to work pretty good. Um, but they, they'll, you'll continue to have market on the close orders because. For these guys, it's their way of getting out at the end of the day. They have certain quarters they have to meet. They haven't met them during the day. They got to do it by the end of the day, and they just throw a market order at the in the, in the marketplace. So, 
No, uh, I don't. I don't think it's a smart way of doing. It. You know, they buy the same way in the beginning of the month when you hand them new money. They're buying at the opening, you know, and now they're selling at the close. So I don't know. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question about the market on the close orders. Is a good question. And um, next question comes from John. John wants to know, do you think the reinstatement of the short selling on Thursday helped create the short squeeze, especially over the last two days, which helped the market rally? Well, you know, some people will argue yes. Uh, I don't know for sure, but I do know this, that when they removed that short selling um, opportunity, uh, that they definitely created an imbalance uh, in the equilibrium of the marketplace. Um, and now that they've reinstated it, which, you know, I'm finally happy that all the players that used to use the short selling uh, strategy, I don't think they've all returned yet. So I don't think the market has gotten back to its equilibrium to where it was. That's not to say that the market is going to keep the market from going up or down. It, it, it adds liquidity to the market. And what the Fed did is they took liquidity out of the market when they, when they banned short selling. Uh, it's just a natural way that the market sort of self-corrects itself. You know, all the players have their own ideas, and it it just adds liquidity. So now that it's back, uh, thank God. Uh, I don't know if all the players that that use the short selling are back yet. Um, in time, they'll they'll come back. But um, you know, I uh, when you're short, you got to buy them back. So they they do create they do create rallies from time to time. Whether uh, Friday's rally was based on that, who knows? Could be, uh, but uh, that, that's that's my that's my take on uh, on, on the short sale rule. You know, they they disrupted the equilibrium of, of the of the marketplace by doing that. Uh, okay, uh, this comes in from Matthew. I'm running out of time, so I got to go fast, Matthew. Uh, Matthew made some mental notes of some comments I made about the '87 crash such as we were exa we exhausted all our buying power on that by the close of Monday, which is true. We had no money. We had no cash left to buy any more stocks. By the end of that Tuesday, we either had to sell some stocks or we had to get some more cash in. And uh, luckily, we got a big rally on Tuesday, so we wound up selling stocks uh, you know, uh, on the upside. And uh, that, that, that solved that problem. But uh, they really did take the, they took the system right to the brink that that on that time. You got to remember the market dropped 18 18 percent in one day. This decline has taken nine days. I mean it's still nasty, but at least the specialist has had had a few days to trade out of some of his positions before we've dropped all these points. In '87, it all happened in one day basically. So. Uh, that's that's the difference. The specialist can stay more liquid now because he's had he's had time to anything he's bought he's had time to spin out of maybe not at a profit necessarily but to stay liquid. Uh, Matthew also wants to know that uh, do you think that they've run into any cash problems or do you think they're not uh, creating uh, um, liquid markets because they might have some some cash problems. Uh, I'm not I'm not down there anymore so I'm not the insider but uh, I think if there were problems I would have heard and you know the specialist uh, requirements for capitalization have been quadrupled since 87 so uh, I don't believe they have a cash problem at all and I don't believe that they're not keeping a nice orderly market uh, because if they don't they have guidelines if they don't the exchange will take the stock away from them and give them to another stock to another specialist it happened in 87 10 stocks were taken away from specialists that the exchange felt did not do a good enough job in creating markets in that turmoil and uh, they re they re uh, uh, established them with other specialists so so the specialist, I believe, is doing a bang-up job down there under the conditions. I even mentioned that in my uh, in my video on Friday. Uh, they keep the markets going. They're there. They can't walk away. They're not like the ECN guys or the over-the-counter guys who don't want to pick up the phone or decide not to put a bid in that day. Oh, well, I'm not going to play. The market's too volatile. The specialist is there. He has to be there. So he's the he's the buyer or seller of last resorts. But at least if you want out, he'll make you. He'll he'll create some sort of a market. So, um, um, I still think it's a great system, uh, even though it's been altered and changed. But, uh, you know, he's still there. In times of trouble, um, you know, at least the specialist is still there to, to create a market. 
Okay, so um, run out of time. Uh, sorry. Uh, I hope I hope I've been helpful in answering some of the questions. Uh, like I said earlier in the, in the video, if you have any questions, if I can answer them, I'll be I'll be happy to just send them send them on in. So until Monday, this is TK signing off.